India Legal Stories That Count. Hello and welcome to another exciting new edition of India Legal Magazine, the independent weekly journal that brings you all the news, the relevant news concerning our courts, the way the system runs, judges, lawyers, important law cases, etc., etc. Uh, we bring you all the fresh news every single week. And this week's um, major story, uh, which we have put on the cover, is um, a story that spotlights the judicial infrastructure. We call that story a little too late, or rather, too little too late. It's written by our one of our star correspondents, Sanjay Raman Sinha, and he quotes Chief Justice of India N. V. Ramanna, recently lamenting that available resources are not being put to maximum use to upgrade judicial infrastructure in the country. His comments have once again brought into sharp focus the shortcomings of the system. The woes of a rickety judicial infrastructure have always been the bane of the judiciary. Pendency, lack of adequate courtrooms and facilities, inadequate online substructure have heavily impacted the justice delivery system. India has a mammoth judicial structure and expectations are high that justice uh, to, uh, to the needy will be delivered uh, 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 fast. But the wheels of justice turn exceedingly slowly and oftentimes justice is delayed and hence denied. In October 2021, the Chief Justice recognized the need for a centralized system to overhaul the judicial infrastructure and made it more in tune with the needs, or rather make it more in tune with the needs of, the, of, of, of uh, our digital times. He therefore suggested the setting up of the National Judicial Infrastructure Authority, NJIA of India. He is uh, rightly envisaged that the financial autonomy was the first step in the creation of an organization which is utilitarian, modern, and state-of-the-art. He said that good judicial infrastructure for courts, and I quote him, in India, has been an afterthought. And it is because of this mindset that courts in India still operate from dilapidated structures, making it difficult to effectively perform their function. Judicial infrastructure is important for improving access to justice and to meet the growing demands of the public. The observations of the CJI are relevant in view of the ramshackle state of the infrastructure, which I, I will recount for you in a moment. For instance, um, the, uh, um, in pursuance of, of, of the mission to set up NGAI, uh, the, the, the Chief Justice's office conducted an all India survey of 6,000 trial courts in various states. The results were dismaying indeed. Around 100 court complexes did not have a washroom for women. 10% courts did not have access to proper in, to internet facilities. Justice V.K. Gupta, the first Chief Justice of the Charkhan High Court, told India Legal, lack of digital, I'm quoting him, lack of digital infrastructure such as internet, computers and e-filing systems, and the lack of physical infrastructure in lower courts or subordinate courts is a cause of concern to the core issue of dispensation of justice. Digital infrastructure plays a very important role in faster dispensation of justice, lack of which has put lawyers in a disadvantageous position in terms of access to current law updates. See, upgradation of virtual infrastructure, of course, is, is an ongoing project. The E-Committee of the Supreme Court was established in 2004 via an order of the Ministry of Law and Justice in pursuance of a proposal received from the then Chief Justice. The E-Committee is the governing body charged with overseeing the E-Court sub-project. This, this project is a pan-Indian initiative monitored and funded by the Department of Justice, uh, Ministry of Law and Justice, rather. Uh, the current E-Committee is chaired by none other than Justice D.Y. Chandrachur. It's almost 18 years now since the efforts to install and upgrade the virtual infrastructure of the courts began. Phase one stretched from 2004 to 2015. Phase two is in the process. Phase three is yet to start. Um, though the roadmap 
uh, is in the public domain for, for a year now. The roadmap envisions a judicial system that is more accessible, efficient, and equitable. According to the blueprint for phase three, it envisions an infrastructure that is natively digital. Phase three will enable any litigant or lawyer to file a case from anywhere at any time without having to go through multiple windows in the premises of any specific court. It seeks to create a reality in which lawyers and litigants can effectively plead their cases with a certain with the certainty of hearings and judges are able to, to, to adjudicate fairly through optimal digital and physical hearings. Uh, though virtual sessions are, are not a new phenomenon in courts, there exists a great digital divide and digital illiteracy which needs to be overcome. Hence, imparting training to advocates on the basis of on, on a basic digital usage in e-court services is a must. Um, experts insist that judicial training and reorientation has to be the number one priority in the context of the march of the judiciary towards complete digitization and the handling of virtual or electronic data. Enhancing capacity building in this new technological paradigm means that judicial personnel would need to be constantly trained, not just on issues pertaining uh, uh, to the digital format, but also to electronic evidence and evidentiary aspects. Well, the next uh, crucial step is to impart training to law students on digital literacy. Um, there have been training modules and trainers for phase one and, and phase two of, of e-courts. However, uh, the adoption rates are low. Uh, therefore, in phase three, there should be dedicated change management framework, uh, which will look at increasing adoption levels, creating feedback loops along with a grievance redressal mechanism. That's essential. Now, clearly, this is a long road ahead and judicious use of funds and technology can go a long way in ensuring success to the e-court mission in enhancing physical infrastructure. However, the government should release funds due to the judiciary so that balanced development is achieved. With the Chief Justice Ramanna already having sent the proposal for the establishment of uh, NJIAI to the Ministry of Law, uh, the ball is now squarely in the government's court to greenlight the project and give the judiciary the big push that it needs. Um, a sad fact that I want to bring to your, uh, to your notice um, is that even though recently about 7,000 crore rupees have been released for the modernization of the court system, uh, less than 40 to 50 percent funds have so far been utilized, which is a really sad commentary on, on the governance of our court system. And I hope this improves drastically as magazines like India Legal continue to focus on this critical area of, of, of governance. Uh, you can read this article for free, uh, the full version of this article on www.indialegallive.com. That's www.indialegallive.com. Until next time, this is Indrajit Badwar.